Good afternoon, or as we like to say in the South, happy fall, y'all. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make a drink that I call a fall fashion, and it's based on a classic cocktail that you may be familiar with, the Old Fashioned. Um, an Old Fashioned is a really simple drink. Uh, it requires a liquor, usually a bourbon, um, bitters, sugar, a splash of water. There are some recipes that'll say muddle a cherry in there, or maybe express an orange peel, but we're going to ditch those things, and we're going to use uh, some fall flavors. So the, the star of the show is going to be an apple-infused bourbon, and then we're also going to add to that some cardamom, and if you like it a little bit spicier, um, some ginger as well. So let's get to know our ingredients real quick. The first thing you need is a bourbon, <clears throat> and um, this is a drink where the bourbon does matter. So if, if the rule of thumb is if you would not want to sip it as it is, you don't want to put it in your drink because the flavor of the bourbon is really going to come through. It doesn't have to be a super expensive one. Um, the one I'm product place in here, and I swear I'm not getting any money from them. I wish I were getting like infinite supply of their bourbon. Uh, Four Roses is one of my favorites. Um, you can get a 750 milliliter bottle for like $20, $25, so it doesn't have to break the bank. And to make an infused bourbon is really easy. The only trick is you gotta be patient. You gotta, you gotta take a little time. So in this case, you're gonna take a few apples, like two or three apples, chop them up, and put them into a mason jar. And then top that off, and I'm not going to do it here because I've already done that, but top that off with bourbon and seal it up and let it sit for at least a week. You could even go like two or three weeks, you know, if you want to. Um, every day or so, give it a good shake just to make sure everything's mixing in. Uh, if you want to add some other spices, you can. I have a friend who does this where he will add cinnamon sticks and nutmeg. Um, but if you're going to add spices, do that in like the last two or three days because cinnamon is, it's really aggressive in how quickly it imparts flavor. And you can get too much too quickly if you're not careful. If you do not feel like uh, taking the time or you just don't care to make your own infusion, um, you can find some apple-infused bourbons and whiskeys. I've got a couple right here uh, that I picked up yesterday. I have not tried them. Um, I just brought them for demo, and, and I'll give them a try later. But most of the major producers uh, have these now. There's even some smaller-scale producers that have them as well. Um, so feel free to look around your liquor store. Um, side point, too, if you're, if you're wondering, you heard me say bourbon before and now bourbon or whiskey, and you're like, what's the difference between a bourbon and a whiskey, Sean? Well... There is, there is a distinction. A bourbon is a subset of a whiskey, and for anyone who's thinking, oh, it has to be made in Kentucky, you would be wrong on that. Um, though most bourbons do come from Kentucky, the only geographic requirement is that it be produced within the U.S. What makes a bourbon really distinct is uh, the grains that are used to make it and the way that it's aged. So you have to have at least 51% corn when you make the mash. For the fermentation and it has to be aged in unused charred oak barrels so you can file that away for your next trivia night and maybe win a few points all right so in addition to and here's my infused bourbon in addition to your infused bourbon um, we are going to be adding some ground cardamom <clears throat> which cardamom is one of those like really underappreciated spices it's kind of sweet it's really distinct um, if you want a game changer when you are going into thanksgiving this year Add like a teaspoon of ground cardamom to your pumpkin pie mix before you put it in the shell and bake it. It will take it to a whole new level. And then if you like things a little bit spicier, then some fresh ginger is a good idea. But I have also made this without the ginger, and um, I think it's really good without as well. I love really spicy things, so ginger's in for me, but that may not work for you. So do what floats your boat on that one. And then, of course, we're going to need some sugar, and we're going to need bitters, and we're going to need some water. Um, you can use kind of any kind of bitters you want. I'm using a standard just Angostura bitters. <clears throat> and for the sugar, you can use any kind of sugar you want to. I am using uh, a turbinado sugar. It's branded as sugar in the raw uh, on, the, on the shelves, but you can use a plain white sugar. You can use a sugar cube. It's kind of a classic way to do it. I should probably move this away from the camera. Um, if you use a simple syrup, that's fine too. Just don't add water if you use a simple syrup. So, eh, about a spoonful of sugar. I only measure if I'm baking. And then I would normally add the, the bitters next, but I'm going to add the cardamom just so you can kind of see how much, and I'll try to get it close to the camera. You don't need a whole lot. And like I said, I only measure when I'm baking, so I'm just guessing here. Yeah, that's about right. So it might be a little hard to see if you can... Eh, I may have to pick up the camera to show this. Let's see. So you can kind of see like that darker stuff in the middle is the cardamom, so that's like about how much you'll probably want, um, you know, more or less to taste as you prefer. And when you add the bitters, 
Um, you don't want to drown it, but you do want all the sugar to be wet. So you can be kind of generous with the bitters. You want enough that everything, so you can say I'm kind of putting a fair amount. Um, you want enough that the sugar gets really soaked in the bitters. And a splash of water if you're using regular sugar and not simple syrup. Don't need much. And if you are adding the ginger, <clears throat> I've already sliced mine up here, but you can see about like how much I'm putting in there. Add your ginger. If you don't have the ginger, all you have to do is stir and dissolve the sugar, but if you are putting in ginger, you want to muddle it. If you don't have a muddler, grab a pestle. If you don't have a pestle, what are you doing without a pestle? But go grab a spoon, just anything that will help you really mash it up. And what you're doing here is you're trying to extract all the juices and the, the oils and such from that ginger to really get the flavor going in there, and also dissolve the sugar. And this is going to take a moment because that sugar is pretty thick. Okay, that... Oh wow, I wish smell would transmit because this smells amazing right now. Um, add an ice cube or two. I have a fancy square ice cube maker that my sister gave me for Christmas one year. And then, oh, hold on, I want the infused bourbon. Take um, a shot of your apple infused bourbon and pour it over top. And then give it a little swirl and you have a fall fashion ready to drink. So if you end up trying this, especially if you make your own infusion, please drop me a line, I'd love to hear about it. Salud. And that is really amazing too.